Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, recently wrote that, thanks to the wonders of AI, by 2035, we might go from solving high energy physics one year to beginning space colonization the next year. I wouldn't go so far to say that the entire field of high energy physics is a problem, though I can see where he's coming from. And Altman isn't the only AI guy who has a fascination with solving physics. So what could AI do for the problems we have in physics? That's what I want to talk about today. Eventually, we'll solve every problem in physics. They'll eventually evolve an entire internal world model, right? And they'll have like a complete understanding of physics. When I was a kid, my, my favorite subject was physics. And I was interested in all the big questions, fundamental nature of reality, what is consciousness, all the, you know, all the big ones. And usually you go into physics if you're interested in that. But I read a lot of the great physicists, some of my all-time scientific heroes like Feynman and so on. And I realized in the last sort of 20, 30 years, we hadn't made much progress. Uh, in understanding some of these fundamental laws. He's right, of course, about the lack of progress. I don't know why physicists get so upset when I say that. Maybe I should just grow a beard. Okay, but how much can AI plausibly help with understanding these fundamental laws? I want to answer this question in two steps. One is what the currently existing models can do, and then what AI might one day be able to do. First, for most problems in the foundations of physics, it's unlikely that AI is going to lead to big breakthroughs by just letting it analyze existing data. This is because the major problem with these fundamental questions is the lack of data. Think of dark matter, the origin of the universe, quantum gravity. If we had more and better data, probably even physicists could solve these problems. The area in physics with the most data is almost certainly high energy physics, just because particle collisions produce a lot of data. But particle physicists have been using machine learning before anyone else even heard of that, and they've analyzed their data upside down for decades. I strongly doubt that any AI can squeeze out more of this data. There just isn't anything there. One possibility, though, comes from quantum computers, which are generating a lot of data, and there could plausibly be something new to find there, even with the current AIs. This gives me a lot of hope that we'll soon see a breakthrough in the foundations of physics. Besides this, the currently existing AIs can make progress in physics, indeed in any area of science, because there's almost certainly knowledge hidden in the published literature that no one's paying attention to. The problem is that there are just too many papers published now for anyone to keep an overview. Indeed, it's possible that we already have an answer to the question of how to quantize gravity or what dark matter is. It's just that no one's ever heard of it. While that's possible, I think it's unlikely. I say that because the people who work on this all think pretty much the same way, and they all constantly recycle the same ideas that don't work. Very little original work, except for my own, of course, says everyone. Okay, that was data analysis and literature search. Now, what about theory development? The current systems aren't any good at it, and I think they'll never be, because they need to be trained on something. But almost all the theories and the foundations of physics are junk. They're mathematical fiction. They have no relation to reality. If you want more junk, then large language models are great. If you want problems solved, not so great. But then what about future AIs? Could they do it? I suspect that people like Demis Hassabis are optimistic about this because of the rapid progress AIs have made in mathematics. Indeed, this seems to have some mathematicians spooked, and rightfully so. According to a recent article in Scientific American, Ken Ono, a mathematician at the University of Virginia, says, I have colleagues who literally say these models are approaching mathematical genius about the most recent reasoning capabilities of large language models. He continues, 
I've never seen that kind of reasoning before in models. That's what a scientist does. That's frightening. I think it's very possible that 99% of mathematicians will be replaced by logical reasoning machines within the coming decade. I say this because mathematical proofs follow methodologies that can be learned from reading a lot of proofs. And then you sprinkle some random exploration over it. And I think this will cover most of what mathematicians do. And after maths, the next most obvious target is physics. But well, physics isn't maths. In physics, logic and proofs only get you so far because there are countless mathematically correct theories that just don't describe reality. Humans have found a few logically possible solutions to the big open problems in physics, such as various candidates for theories of everything, grand unification, ways to avoid the black hole information loss problem, and so on. Then we have lots of dark matter candidates and ideas ideas for the origin of the universe, etc, etc. These are for the most part mathematically fine, and yes, a sufficiently intelligent AI might find more, but we really don't need more of that. What we'd need is a system intelligent enough to find a better way to do physics in the first place. I think this is possible by learning from what has worked in the past, but it'll be a long time until AI gets there. That is, I think there'll be a big gap between AI taking over maths and it taking over physics, says the physicist. Yeah, let's talk about this again in five years. If this video inspired you to start your own physics research before everything is taken over by AI, I recommend you have a look at the courses at Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. If you want to go and check them out, make sure to use my link or QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything for free for 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.